Good morning, everyone. My name is Mary Way, and I'm the prayer partner for today. This beautiful candle reminds us that we are the light, that this candle resides deep within us, nourishing us, enfolding us. As we set aside the busyness of our day and release all our earthly concerns, which these days seem to be plentiful, we take a deep cleansing breath and sink into our heart. A place of calm and silence. We rest here knowing that we are peace, we are life, we are love. Each of us a unique expression of the one power and presence. And as we nourish this infinite light, this perfect light, we claim divine order, guiding us and bringing balance and focus in body, mind, and spirit. Let us nourish this light. And as we nourish it, we can claim our divine order. Let us open to the infinite wisdom that we are as we prepare to receive today's messages. And for this opportunity to be together, to share, we are truly grateful and say thank you, thank you, thank you. And so it is. Amen. Oh, thank you, Mary, for gracing us with that beautiful opening prayer. So my name, my name is, is Linda McCabe, and I am honored to be the service facilitator today to welcome you to our online Unity Spiritual Center Ottawa Sunday service. And as we begin, we would like to acknowledge the Algonquin Nation on whose traditional unceded territory we are holding this online service. We gratefully acknowledge them for past, present, and future stewards of this land. And I'd like to welcome Spencer Scarf with us this week. Uh, he is singing our first opening song, our joy song, I Walk Away, written by Eddie Watkins Jr. Take it away, Spencer. Walk away 
Spencer. Well, can everyone join me in knowing that today is the day we walk away, that we walk on our clear path away from our confusion, away from uh, the chatter of our minds. I love that. So today we have a home growing service with three USCO participants taking center stage, and I couldn't be happier to see our community involved in expanding and sharing its wisdom this way. So last week was quite a week in in the cosmic sense for sure, and I think it's worth repeating. So last weekend, we had August 7th, 8th, and 9th was the 888 Lion's Gate, which was a profound opportunity for all humanity to redream the collective human story into freedom for all. Our sun also aligned with the sun of Sirius, and as a result, we are receiving an extra measure of light throughout this entire month as our sun also travels through the Leo constellation. And all told, that was an amazing weekend. And then we had the Perseid meteor shower on August 9th, 10th, and 11th. And I hope some of you were able to view this magical show. So, you know, as a result of all these changes in just one month, I was inspired to upgrade my life another notch. And my sisters in Nova Scotia and I have embarked on a nine-day raw food cleanse. So I may begin to look like a vegetable garden when I finish. So I ask you, what is inspiring you? Is there anything in your life that you are yearning to change? Or maybe everything is just good the way it is. And you get to experience the gratitude of that. When we get clear on who we are and why we're here, we experience our vision, an awakened world celebrating oneness. I invite you to take a breath and notice how you are experiencing the ESCO vision, an awakened world celebrating oneness. And we do that by expanding consciousness and transforming lives every week. So Unity's worldwide theme is for 2020 is perfect vision, seeing through a spiritual lens. And like our, you know, if we have sunglasses on or glasses on, or we're looking out a window that isn't perfectly clean, our vision is obscured. And when we polish them, shine them up, suddenly we see things differently. And I'm reminded of Dr. Wayne Dyer who said, when at whatever we look at, when we change the way we look at something, what we look at changes. So let us use our perfect vision for 2020. And the monthly theme for August is acceptance. And let us, let us join together with the affirmation, I release resistance and experience acceptance. And let us say this again and really feel it. I release resistance and experience acceptance. And Moni's talk last week beautifully illustrated the benefits, the many benefits we receive when we forgive and accept the circumstances in our lives. So let us move on to our announcements. So today, uh, is our circle community circle? It's the first one really that we've had since we've gone on, on since we've gone online. So it'll be after fellowship. We're thinking around noon, and so come and hear what you know the board's been up to. Uh, we're looking for feedback and an opportunity to ask and answer questions. So please join us after um, fellowship today. 
So this is an exciting um, online book study opportunity. Unity Ministers Bill Heller and Paul Hasselbach co-authored a book, Unity and A Course in Miracles, that's been very highly rated. So Bill is going to be offering an online five-week course starting August 26th from 2 to 4 p.m. The cost is $50. You can get the book through Amazon, either buy the book and have it delivered or a Kindle version. And to register, contact Cheryl Rogers and her email address. Um, I'll say it. It's macunitykitchener at gmail.com. macunitykitchener at gmail.com. And it's also available as a CEU credit for those who are gathering or collecting credits. Thank you. Also coming up uh, early September, mid-September, September 16th, for 10 Wednesdays, Reverend Pat Ball is holding a course in self-awareness. And to register, it's email reverendpatball at gmail.com by September 13th, which is a suggested love offering of $10 to $15 for class. And it's paid directly to our own ministry, so or Unity Ministry in Motion. So we have a choice there. So there are required decks in The Flow of Life by Eric Butterworth, an excellent novel. And Conscious Living, Finding Joy in the Real World by Gay Hendricks. So they're both available from Amazon or Chapters. This is also in the newsletter, so the, um, if you need to reference it, please look there. And an opportunity to join our newsletter if you haven't already done so. Keeps you updated, and the Unity mail, mail address is Office Unity Ottawa at yahoo.ca, and she will make sure that you're added to the list. And Spencer, we welcome you back for The World We Love, written by Rafi and Michael Krieger. Guys and ponies, children at play, earth below, stars above, God bless it every day. Miscovered mountains that welcome the sun, buds on the branches, morning's begun, dewdrops and birds starting to sing. Praise for the brand new day. Here's to the world we love. Blue skies and ponies and children at play. Earth below, stars above. God bless it every day. harvest food for our meals mothers and fathers and hearts filled with love for each and every day is to the world we love blue skies and ponies and children at play earth below stars above God bless it every day. Here's to the rivers that run wild and free pull of the tide to rush to the sea gold crimson sunsets to color our dreams in each and every day here's to the world we love blue 
skies and ponies, children at play, earth below, stars above, God bless it every day. God bless it every day. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much, Spencer. It's such an opportunity to remember that we are blessed every day and to also bless nature around us yeah. and not take it for granted. So um, I would love to invite Lovedy uh, Desjardins on to read the daily word today. Lovedy? Good morning. The daily word today is protected. I shine my light and feel protected. Feelings of fear that creep into my life may conjure childhood memories of scary nighttime images and noises. As a child, I may have felt afraid of the dark or startled by an unfamiliar sound. But the morning sun always dispelled the darkness and I realized there was never anything to fear. I keep that knowledge alive as I let the divine presence within dissolve the darkness of fear and shine the light of comfort and safety. Now, when any darkness descends in my life, I remember the protecting love, presence, and power of God expressing as me. As I attune more to my divine nature, light dawns within my consciousness and I realize that God's protection is always mine. And today's Bible reading is from Psalms 27, chapter 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my stronghold of life. Of whom I will be afraid. Namaste. Thank you, Lovedy. And I'd like to invite Mary Way, the prayer, our prayer partner on duty today. So Mary, please uh, lead us in the affirmative prayer. Thank you. Oh, good morning again. Yes. Um, this month, we have been examining, celebrating, del delving into our power of elimination and release. <clears throat> And this is the ability to release, remove, denounce, deny, let go, all of those things for which we have no need. The disciple is Thaddeus, the release of negative thoughts. The color is russet, and it's located in the abdominal region. Let's, uh, let's affirm together. I release anything and everything that no longer serves my unfolding good. This month, we're also praying for Unity Center of Winnipeg and Unity Christ Center of Truth in Etobicoke, Ontario. And before we pray, let's take a moment to bring to mind Bring to mind anyone that you would like to have prayed for, that you would like to keep in your heart. Let us begin by taking a deep breath and release. Divine love and peace enfolds us and those we care about in thoughts of strength and peace. We bless those whose names we are holding in our hearts, in our minds. We bless them with the spirit of wholeness and vitality. As we breathe in again, we claim divine order in all their situations and circumstances of mind, body, and life. 
We open our hearts and minds to the perfect peace of the universe and see those we hold so dear calmed and soothed. For these blessed loved ones, relatives, friends, colleagues, world leaders, and for the one power and presence present in all things, we are truly grateful. And so we say, thank you, thank you, thank you. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, Mary, for the beautiful prayer, reminding us of our wholeness. So before we go into our mess meditation and message, um, I would like to uh, just remind you that if you are on Gallery View, if you want to optimize your experience, uh, especially the speakers, uh, to switch to speaker view, either by clicking uh, on Gallery View, at the name Gallery View at the top. If you're seeing speaker view, you're already on it. Um, or, sorry, the word gallery view, and uh, that will bring you into the speaker view. Or you can hover your mouse over the top of the box, uh, the video box, and you will see some little boxes and click on the smaller box. So let's begin. A couple of months ago, in response to a request from our community to hear the congregants, we had six people volunteer. And we were all inspired when we heard the first three speakers last month. And today, we have the honor of receiving the wisdom from our remaining three speakers. Each of today's speakers will focus on their challenges and breakthroughs over the last few months. And what I'm going to do, um, we're going to do the meditation first. And then as we um, switch to the speaker, I will introduce each one individually and they will speak and then i will introduce the next one and they will speak so let us first begin the meditation spencer is going to lead us a song and and then i will do the meditation and from there we will enjoy our speakers thank you let go shore and let the water carry me let go of the shore flow into the mystery let go of the shore and let the water carry me let go Let go of the shore and let the water carry you. If you have not already done so, I invite you to close your eyes. Take a full deep breath of peace, moving it through your body to any area of tightness and breathing out any tension and relaxing your whole body even more. Take another slow, full breath of stillness and peace, filling all the cells and organs in your body with this stillness and this peace. And breathing out any remaining tension as you feel yourself relaxing even deeper. In your mind's eye, see or imagine a body of water. It can be a lake, 
a river, a stream, the ocean. Notice how the sunlight sparkles in the water, inviting you to step into the water. As you put your feet in the water, you notice the temperature is perfect. You walk in even further, allowing your body to be immersed in the silky smoothness of the water, feeling the light shimmering all around you, relaxing and energizing your body. Letting go of the shore, let the water carry you. Letting go of the shore, allow yourself to float into the mystery as you enter the silence. Becoming aware of all the ways the water is carrying you, you gratefully thank the water and the sunlight for supporting you, for carrying you into the mystery. Leaving the water, feeling refreshed and relaxed, you dry off. And bringing your attention to your breath, moving your fingers and toes as you open your eyes and prepare to receive our speakers. So our speakers, the unveiling of our speakers as we call, we titled this Voices from the Community Part Two, Challenges, Insights and Lessons Learned While Social Distancing. We have three speakers in this order, Lynn Atterbury, Cheryl Driscoll, and Deborah Martin. And first, I would like to introduce Lynn, Lynn Atterbury, who really needs very little introduction. Lynn has served in many roles within the ESCO community and currently is Director of Music, responsible for selecting the music for Sunday services. Lynn is a retired social worker in the field of addiction and mental health. She is an avid and gifted photographer whose camera lens entices her to adventures around the world. And Lynn is a proud mother and grandmother. So please join me in welcoming Lynn. Lynn, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Okay, um, good morning. I, uh, my experience with this virus has been varied, okay? My friend uh, Lovely and I were in Portugal when we heard about the virus. Although I, I uh, immediately felt really sad for all the people who had been affected in, in, in China and Italy and Spain by this time. We really hadn't heard a whole lot about it in, in happening in Canada. It may have been, but we didn't hear about it. And um, very little, if anything at all, in Portugal. And it wasn't until our, our last week there that Portugal began to close some of its doors. And uh, my first reaction, I remember uh, thinking how crazy it was, well, did they notice that this drugstore wasn't letting anybody in and was kind of dealing with people one by one at the door. And uh, anyway, on, on, on the plane trip back to Canada, someone became ill on our plane. And as a consequence, because of all the precautions that they, they took around this, it took us 90 minutes 90 minutes after we had already landed before we could get off the plane. And I remember I wasn't terribly impressed by that either. Although I should have been grateful because I know now that I was minimizing the threat and actually uh, was very, very lucky to get home when I did. 
we still had to get home from Montreal. So I had asked my son Colin to come and pick us up. And I really hadn't given a whole lot of thought to this. I'm still minimizing. I had forgotten that my, my son's wife actually might have been a little more vulnerable than others to the virus because of her lifelong diabetes. But they had, my son had, and he agreed to come anyway. And as he mentioned his concerns to me, I began to feel guilty. And I became a bit more conscious about how serious all of this really was. But just a bit more conscious. I still believed that as long as I didn't sneeze on anybody or let anybody sneeze on me, that everything was going to be okay. Now, I'm not sure if it hadn't become mandatory quite yet or whether I just didn't understand that 14 day isolation meant no contact with anyone, period. Nevertheless, I went out myself to get groceries very soon after getting home. I, I was certain I didn't have the virus. I was careful to keep the proper distance as required, but I didn't have any mask on or any gloves. And it wasn't until the Monday when I left my apartment to go into the laundry room uh, that I got a little bit of a rude awakening. As I was going about my task, I heard a rap on the door and suddenly there was the custodian peeking his head in and oh, he was angry. He was, he was giving me the proper old uh, what for, I'll tell you, uh, before leaving my apartment. And I was a little bit angry, but that didn't take me very, very long before I realized that, that he was right. Because uh, even if, if, if I had had this virus, uh, others could easily have picked it up from all the things that I was touching in the in the laundry room. Okay. Anyway, so I regretted my actions and and I made certain I did not leave my apartment again for the duration of the 14 days. Now, of course, as things worsened, I wor I realized how, how how wrong I'd been. I could have put others, including my own family, at risk. But fortunately, we we all stayed healthy as we settle into our social isolation. I'm, I'm so grateful that, that I was really one of the fortunate ones. I had no loss of income to worry about, uh, no, no problems with isolation because basically I'm, I'm always been a loser, loner. <laughs> I can always find things to do to, to keep me busy. And although, yes, I, I, like everybody else, I have my moments of fear and boredom and loneliness. I've been at Unity long enough to kind of know how to deal with those feelings so they don't hang around for very long. My one personal concern really about isolating, isolating was that I might get too comfortable in my safe and cozy world. That then that wouldn't have been good for me. <laughs> but thankfully, I began to realize that people weren't going to let me do that. My son started calling me more often. I heard from friends and neighbors I hadn't heard from in years. And of course, my family at Unity, thanks to our dedicated Unity leaders, quickly found a way to offer support through it all, reminding me of just how important it is to have other caring, insightful people in your life. So it has helped me to dig deeper, to question the kind of life I want to live, and to ask myself if I should be reaching out more in ways to others. I'm still not, still not terribly fearful, actually, about myself becoming infected. I am now very conscientious about wearing a mask and, you know, in public places and that. But not so much because I, I am afraid of being in, exposed myself, mainly just out of the respect of, of the needs and feelings of others. In spite of my usual tendency to worry about health issues, I, I just have this strong faith that this virus is, is not something I need to personally worry about. In fact, I, I really believe that if I were to worry excessively about it, that I would be more likely to attract it to me. And I, I do know that the world is changing. Some of the things have been lost to us that we may never get back. Hopefully, though, we, we've already gained, we, we've gained some things. We've gained new ways to relate to each other. We, we've, we've gained uh, new insight into ourselves. We've also learned more about the vulnerability of the world. And that worries me, it, that if we humans are unwilling to accept any sacrifice of our own needs and comforts, 
how can any government, no, no matter how caring or principled, make the kind of changes that are becoming needed, that we're going to need to preserve the good quality of life for everyone on this planet? I have to ask myself, okay, well, what's my role in that? What can I do to help? Will I change because of this pandemic? I hope so. In one aspect, it has shown me that I am not always as caring as I thought I was or, or should be. I like to see myself as a loving person, but just how far am I willing to reach out of myself, to inconvenience myself, to help others? COVID and all my friends who are surrounding me are teaching me. They're actually showing me what love really means. And, and I don't know what will come of that, but for that, I am so truly grateful. And I'm grateful to all of you for giving me a chance to speak today. Thank you. Oh, so much insight, Lynn. Thank you so much. And I would like to now invite um, Cheryl Driscoll, our next speaker. And Cheryl is relatively new to our community here, but she has been so generous with sharing her, her wisdom over the last few months. So I've highlighted a, a few key points from her, her extensive biography. Cheryl began her search off the truth as a young person. For over 32 years as a Sufi teacher, elder, and author, she teaches individuals to seek the truth, guiding them through their heart to their own self-mastery. She offers workshops, healing sessions, and Sufi training. Today, she lives a life of devotion and service to God and its compassionate expression. She lives in Wakefield, or just outside Wakefield now, uh, with her loving partner, Anne, and adorable chocolate lab mocha. So please join me in welcoming Cheryl. Hi, everyone. Thank you for this opportunity to speak with you today. Um, very real to me right now is a profound sadness that I've been carrying since um, COVID hit the world. And on the other hand, I'm very um, happy in my life and very grateful. I have a beautiful life, beautiful partner and home and family and close friends. I have nothing uh outside of a uh, very beautiful little paradise here in the south quebec but my heart is aching and i can't pretend that it's not and i also feel anger since covid hit the world uh at many levels and i'd like to share those with you um first to say that when i was a child i grew up uh in hamilton ontario but we would often visit Ottawa to see my grandmother, my little French grandmother. And when we would go to her house in uh, Westboro, which used to be a little cottage village actually, and um, E.B. Eddy used to dump their shavings across from the house where my dad lived on Cole Avenue. And they used to play in those shavings. And I remember um, him telling us stories and I would walk into uh, grandma's house and there would be this little lady sitting in a rocking chair wearing a shawl. Very, you know, um, stereotypical little grandmother. And she had her white hair up in a bun and she would rock back and forth. And we couldn't share too much. We didn't speak the same language. She's French Canadian. And I came from Hamilton and didn't speak any French at the time. And um, I said to my dad, I said, who is this? Who is this woman? And when I found out she was my great grandmother, I was joyful. You know, I love grandmothers. I had a great, an amazing grandmother in Hamilton and my grandmother in Ottawa. And so I would sit by her and she would just pet me on the top of the head as I would sit beside a rocking chair. And I asked my dad about her and he explained to me that she raised her first family um, in the uh, Western, uh, Western region, uh, Hall Gatineau farm region. And, but she had experienced many great losses. And one of them was during the flu epidemic of 1918, 19 and 20. And she lost her husband, my great grandfather, uh, Grandpa Leonard. 
and then she lost two sisters-in-laws. And then she lost her oldest daughter and her second oldest daughter and her third oldest daughter. And the only daughter to survive was my grandmother and her youngest brother. So this brings back a lot of pain in my family. But they survived, you know, they made it. And I, I can't imagine a stronger person than this, this woman who I knew as strong and capable, but having endured so many vulnerabilities. And my own grandmother who lost her dad, her, her aunts and her sisters. How did she do it? I don't know. I don't know how she did it. So the thing that I've witnessed in the world today is that there's a lot of great people out there who are doing really amazing things right now, working over time in very vulnerable situations. Some of them are my family. I have four family on the front lines right now, from nursing to doctors. And I recognize their strengths and their values, and I appreciate them immensely. I'm also angry with a couple of them for not wearing their masks around me and my parents. I have, li I live the values of unity, which are very similar to the Sufi practice that I live. Um, the principles are very important. The first principle being we are one. And to me, that means interconnectivity and interdependence. And interdependence implies responsibility. And we need to be responsible to each other. We need to hold each other up during difficult times. And we need to walk side by side and share everything we can to assist each other when we're falling. And the world is falling. And it, all of it needs us. Everybody needs us right now. Um, even though we're, we can go about our days and be happy most of our day, we need, to, we need to do that. We need to be strong. We need to be happy. But we also need to be aware to live the principles. We need to also live the fifth principle, which is the principle of awareness, living in your awareness. We are wise people here at Unity. We know the path and we know how hard it can be, but we know how to live it and share it with others. And the fifth principle is so important. And that's when it comes down to re recognizing that everybody's vulnerable. So we have to do our part and go out there and wear our masks. And right from the beginning, Anne and I were very strong in this. And we have um, truly lived it as well. And um, even though I did get sick myself, we believe it was COVID. It was the most bizarre flu I've ever experienced. And I, I knew I would live because of my healing work and the wisdom work I do the guidance was clear, just, just work it through, just work it through. But not everybody's been as fortunate. And I have been very sad to, uh, to see that there's another area that of great concern, which is, is what they're calling the overlooked. And the, the New York, as you know, in New York, they've lost tens of thousands of people alone. And the New York Times came out with a uh, section of the newspaper which is called the overlooked and this is an area where they started doing long obituaries about people who have left their mark uh, in New York and in, in the world and died during the early stages of COVID where they didn't know what to do and I think that is a remarkable thing to remember people who've made their contributions to our world and we, we cannot forget them. We cannot uh, pretend that everything is going on smoothly. These people have contributed great things to our culture, to our, um, to our society, to our families. And it's important that we don't forget and that we strive to be conscientious so that more people don't pass on with, in unawareness. We know 
the contributors to these unaware to this unawareness. Um, a thousand people a day are dying in the states right now, and that's when I get angry. And that anger is being worked out. I have my practices. I'm working it out, and um, but I'm not forgetting that is there, and I'm I'm praying, and I'm asking people around me to pray, and to to just be the love, be the love that you can be, live it, act in it, uh, live those principles that unity provides, and uh, give as much love to to yourself as you can and to those around you. And uh, thank you for this opportunity to speak with you. And uh, just so you know, if you need a place to escape the city where you can feel some relaxation, Anne and I are now providing a safe space for one or two people at a time to come out and stay out here in the country. We have uh, some rooms available. So I'll put my email in the chat room and you can let us know. Okay, blessings to everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cheryl, for your, your honesty, transparency, and guidance in your talk. So I would like now to introduce our third speaker is, again, somebody who is well known to our community, Dr. Deborah Martin. Deborah is a member of the ESCO Board of Directors, and she is also on the Prayer Partner team. So Deborah is no, no stranger to change and transition. She recently retired from a long career in communications and coaching. And still, like most of us, I think, is trying to figure out what she's going to do when she grows up. Deb is the author of Stars in Life, Coaching Kids to Success, and, and several published articles. And she is a very proud mother. So please join me in welcoming Deborah. Thank you, Linda. This talk may be a bit different from the ones that we've heard before, because I want to tell a story. The story is a drama, but not a tragedy. And I'm going to try and tell it with a bit of humor, hoping that you will find poignant messages despite my feeble attempt at levity. It's the story of a woman in her late 60s, someone whom you might know, who all her life has battled with depression and raging anxiety. It's a story that takes place during COVID restrictions, a situation that normally would have sent me right over the edge. I found Unity about three years ago, and I went in strong, joining the board and becoming a prayer partner. Through my experience with Unity, I have gained much more than I've given. And in particular, I've learned two things that are important to me. First, that principle number three, that our thoughts have the creative power to determine our experience in the events of our lives is absolutely true. We do create our reality through the thoughts we hold in consciousness. As Moni said last, last week, we project our thoughts and beliefs on the world and they become our reality. My thoughts and beliefs have changed so much since I joined Unity that the story I'm about to tell you I perceive as a series of miracles, not a series of really, really in the middle of a pandemic, oh my goodness. And second, I've learned so much about gratitude. I've had some wonderful role models in the board and in the congregation who exhibit gratitude in every instance, in every situation. This gratitude exceeds the count your blessings kind. It's profound and life-changing when you get it. As I experienced each of the miracles in, that occurred in this story, I gave thanks. Our tale begins about four years ago when I was visiting my son James in Miami, where he happened to live at the time. One night I, I woke up with rather spectacular upper abdominal pains. Drawing on my Harvard medical, medical degree, I, I'm kidding, I have no medical training whatsoever, but that, that didn't stop me at all from self-diagnosing the upper abdominal pain. 
I recall that I'd been sitting on a very un reading on a very uncomfortable couch and I had kind of scrunched over. So I assumed that I could squish the muscles in my upper abdomen, maybe squish my diaphragm, case solved. Fast forward to Friday, June 6th of this year. I had the same spectacular upper abdominal pains, but this time I could draw wisdom from the precedent set in Miami. I had again squished my muscles. I had a bad night with the pain, but tried to deal it with Voltaire and rub. And about, at about this point in the story, I can imagine Linda and Susan and anybody else with any medical knowledge doing a face palm. The next morning, a dear friend who's also called Deborah called just to see how I was doing in month four of self-isolation. I explained about the painful squished muscles and she suggested I call my doctor in case something was more serious reach a doctor on a Saturday morning? I don't think so. But because I love Deborah, I gave it a try. The clinic was open. I got to speak to a doctor, miracle number one, and I was so grateful. The doctor said to go to the emergency room if I was no better in the afternoon. I wasn't going to go to the ER for squished muscles. However, Deborah, who knew that I would likely weasel out of calling a doctor, called me back that afternoon. When she heard I was no better, she said, I will be outside your building in 15 minutes to take you to the ER. If you're not there, I will call your son, who now lives in Rockland, very close by. I will rat you out and he will take you. Hmm, bit cheeky. But then I realized that Deborah knows me so well, so intimately, that she, I wouldn't, she knew I wouldn't go to the ER to get the care that I needed unless she intervened. Miracle number two, and I was grateful for the love of such a wonderful friend. There were many other miracles in the days that followed that left me speechless with gratitude. The waiting room at the Civic was empty. I was seen within 15 minutes and bonus miracle, the attending uh, physician was really cute. I explained in rather apologetic tones about the squished muscles. He did an ultrasound, admitted me on the spot, and scheduled two emergency procedures. One, an endoscopic probe to dislodge some gunk in my common bile duct, and two, full gallbladder removal. And this next bit of my tale, I can only contribute to divine intuition, divine intervention, or divine something. Because in that 15 win minute window before Deborah came to take me to the ER, I thought, I'm going to be there forever. I better pack a book. So I stuck a book in a bag. And then I thought, it's late afternoon. It, I'll be there forever. I might as well have my evening, evening pills, evening pills in the bag. But what if I have to wait for morning? I might as well put my morning pills in the bag. And since I'm for sure going to be there overnight, I better put in my disgusting mouth guard as well. Another miracle. I had everything I needed for an extended hospital stay. I spent the night in the observation unit. By Sunday morning, I had a room, got some rest, and prepared myself mentally and spiritually for the two procedures. The scopy thing on Monday was unpleasant, but as soon as my bile duct was cleared of the sludge, the pain stopped, and I was grateful. My Monday night, I was so hungry, I was getting ready to chew my fingernails. I was told I could eat soft foods. When my dinner tray arrived, it had red jello on it. Red jello, not that nasty green stuff, red jello. And I was very grateful. Early Tuesday morning, I had my gallbladder removed. They basically stuck a tripod in my belly and removed my gallbladder through my belly button. I had heard that gallbladder surgery was excruciating painful. It was not, and I was grateful. After surgery, I was really thirsty, so I asked the recovery room nurse for something to drink, and I was offered ice chips. Have you ever tasted ice chips? They're like rainbows and unicorns and sunshine and starlight. They're wonderful, and I was grateful. I was released the next morning. My son came to get me and said he would stay with me until I felt well enough to be alone. 
With him, he brought a big pot of chicken soup like only my mom can make. It was delicious. James and I had a good day and a good night together. And the next morning I told him he, he, I was well enough. He could go home. I didn't want to be a burden. And his life was in Rockland with his fiance and his two dogs. He replied that I was not a burden and that he loved, spe loved spending time with me. Cool. He also said, let's agree that I'll be the one to decide when you're well enough for me to leave. I thought, boy, cheekiness is going around in this town. But then, like in the situation with my dear friend, Deborah, I realized that James know me, knows me so well. He sees who I am. He knows me intimately. And he knew that I would poo-poo my own needs rather than, than have him inconvenienced. And I felt loved and grateful. He stayed four days. It was wonderful. So what's the point of this saga? The point is, as Eric Butterworth said, the nature of our being is such that it is only by a change in consciousness that our outer conditions can really be altered. I could have hated every moment of the situation in which I found myself. I could have complained. I could have railed against reality, which I've done so many other times in my life. I could have talked myself into being victimized and miserable. Instead, I was absolutely overcome with gratitude, not only for the red jello and ice chips, but especially for the professionals who took such good care of me, for our healthcare system, for the ability to still be able to advocate for myself and therefore influence the course of my care, unlike many on the ward. I was grateful for being ambulatory throughout so I could get myself to the bathroom and back. And last but not least, I was so thankful for friends and family who love me just as I am. I'd like to close with a small poem. Two men looked out from behind prison bars. One saw mud, the other stars. Even amidst a pandemic and months of sitting alone in my apartment, with Unity's help, I'm seeing only stars. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Oh my goodness. What a, I loved your story. And I just, I, community, aren't you impressed? Like these, these are, women we know and we love and they've each shared from a very vulnerable place these beautiful um experiences lessons some of them tough raw uh, confusing and yet all have navigated these times of of uh, covid and social distancing and it's just very very inspiring thank you so much to each of you So we will move on to our special music with what written, oh, Time on Earth, written by John Denver and performed by Spencer Scar. Spencer, you do his music beautiful justice. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Mm -hmm. Let the mountains talk. Let the rivers run There is wisdom here There is much to learn There is much to know Much to understand In this healing time All across this land You've heard my songs for so many years. You have laughed with me. Wash away the tears through these darker days. 
on this narrow line in this healing time walk with me again through these darker days on this narrow line help me find my way let me see the signs I'm not afraid I'm not alone You have taught me well You have brought me home Let the mountains speak Let the rivers run there is wisdom here, there is much to learn, there is much to know, much to understand, in this healing time, on our Mother Earth, in this healing time. On our mother earth. Thank you. Ah, just beautiful. Thank you, Spencer. So it's time now for our, our focus on the gratitude we have for the prosperity in each of our lives. And as we heard from our speakers, prosperity and gratitude comes in many, many forms, sometimes even surprising ways. And so we've been energized and uplifted by Mary's prayers, Spencer's music, and the wisdom of our three speakers. So let us just take a moment and breathe into, just reflect on the multiple ways that abundance and prosperity and gratitude show up in your own lives. And definitely, <clears throat> we live, our world is abundant. I am reminded of that almost on a daily basis. And sometimes, you know, I have a lapse in my consciousness and I focus on what I don't have, uh, when in truth, it is just so critical that we follow the principles um, of Unity's teachings. And, you know, the thoughts held in mind reproduce in kind. So let me focus on what's abundant. Let me focus on the leaves of the trees in the backyard. Let me focus on the, the the drops of sunlight sparkling on the water. Let me focus on the love that I have around me. Let me focus on so much. And I invite you, each of you, to, to do that. And to also, in that sense of abundance, part of that is that we give what we, what we have received. And so I invite you to become active participants in Unity. Um, we definitely are supported and sustained by your generous giving. And there are many ways that you can give outlined on our, uh, on our Unity email and also online at Unity. Uh, oh, I keep forgetting the website. It's funny. Unity Ottawa, I think, or Ottawa Unity. I can't remember. So don't listen to me there. It's all in the newsletter. And uh, so let us say our affirmation together. Together, divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I give, all that I have, and all that I receive, and I am grateful. Thank you. And thank you, Stephen, just put the proper address in uh, for Unity website. Okay, thank you. And Spencer is going to share with us our More Than Enough by Daniel Namath. There is more than enough in a universe that you created. There is more than enough in a sacred design. There is more than enough for humanity made in your image. Why would I worry? Why would I doubt? Why would I I go without. Why would I worry? Why would I doubt? Why would I ever think I go without? Your infinite love made me, made everything I see, and all that will Right. 
and let's take this more than enoughness into our unity blessing together unity spiritual center ottawa is abundantly blessed creative people are drawn to us divine ideas flow through us financial resources bless us and we accomplish mighty works together and the bird that sheila chose to fly our blessing off to the universe sheila's going to come on and speak to it Sheila, my favorite bird. I did not know that. Hi, everyone. Um, so unfortunately, my camera is not working again. I will. I promise to get that addressed. But uh, sorry, you can't see me. But I'm here, and I chose the common loon because, well, I don't know about you guys, but I start. I'm starting to notice a hint of the summer is waning, and we're heading into uh, the next season. And I just feel like the loon is such a quintessential summer bird for any of you that have cottages. Uh, I love them. I didn't realize it was Linda's favorite bird, so that's perfect. Just a few little things about these birds. I always like to speak to the evolution of all living things and how they, uh, they, they develop tools and skills, I guess like all of us want to, to cope and to let their inner, well, in this case, their inner loon out <laughs> and shine. They're exceptionally agile swimmers, and that's because unlike most birds, their feet are really far back on their bodies, so, and they, that really gives them a lot of strong propulsion. They're really gangly and awkward and don't spend much time on land, but they have been clocked at 70 kilometers an hour in flight, which is phenomenal. Um, they're kind of like an airplane. They need about 30 yards up to a quarter mile of a runway to get started, so they, you know, they need to sort of hunker down and nest and live on a larger body of water. Something I didn't know but always wondered is where do they go in the winter because they don't make the usual migration like the smaller songbirds. They really just go a little further south and find open water on the on the shores of the ocean, mostly sort of the eastern seaboard of the U.S. That's where they spend their winters. Um, okay, and here's my favorite part. They're, because loyalty is a value of mine, they are monogamous and their pair bonds last typically about five years. So I think that's kind of cool. Um, and then one of the things that's most important, and there are a lot of animals and creatures like this, they are a strong indicator species of the health of our waterways. They need pristine, clear water so they can see all the fish that they need to hunt. Um, so if you've ever had a cottage or been in an area where there once was lots of loons, or once were lots of loons and are now less, that's an indicator that maybe the water health is, is uh, declining. Um, so I, I love that part of nature where we can sort of take notice from the creatures that are trying to let us know we need to do a better job of what we're doing. Sort of something that Lynn spoke to earlier in her talk about what's our role to do in, in making this a better world. So that's it for the little tidbits. I do have one extra little treat as a goodbye because I will be off for three weeks after this. But I don't think that you can speak about a common loon without the experience of actually hearing it. So. Here we go. Let's hope this works. Okay, I hope you heard that. That's it. Thank you, Linda. Oh, thank you, Sheila, so much. Oh, and I love the little bird, the little baby bird on the, on the parent. Oh, that song just haunts me. 
I tell you, I felt tears uh, when I heard it. Thank you. So here we are at the children's blessing. And well, we get to bless Mother Nature, um, who is abundant with her children, all the seeds of growth. And if any of you uh, have pictures of your own children, family that you wish to bless, do send them in to Sheila at the office address. And let us bless the loved ones we have in our life and the abundance of nature. Together, you are the peace, the love, and the light of this world. Let your light shine. So take it away, Spencer. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, hey, I'm gonna let it shine. part in our service to thank all the participants who've made this uh, service possible. Uh, certainly our three speakers. Um, Lynn, you experienced uh, the beginning of COVID and self-isolation from Portugal. So your vantage point was, was really beautiful to then move into the not sure what it is, to the disbelief, to the believing, and the faith that has kept you strong in believing in the power of your own immunity. And Cheryl, uh, I thank you for the, the rawness and your, your vulnerability in expressing as well your deepest feelings, the, the difficult emotions and the, the positive ones and the, the sadness and the hope and the gratitude and all of that. So thank you so much for that. And Deb, uh, Deborah Martin, Thank you for this beautiful, you're such a storyteller um, and loved your story. Uh, you know, the how spiritual principle can really begin to help us even in the most difficult times navigate in a, in a way that brings even more gratitude into our life and profound. So thank you so much. I'd like to thank um, Spencer. Yay, it's always so lovely to see you and glad that you're hanging in with us. And, you know, on our monthly opportunity to share together. Thank you, guys. Uh, yeah, thanks. And Mary Way, thank you for your beautiful prayers. Lovely, thank you for joining us for the Daily Word. And if any of you have um, a desire to read the Daily Word or have a date that you would like to read it, please send that in to Sheila. It does save Brenda and I, you know, in the role of us after scratching our minds and saying, who are we going to reach out to and ask? So I, we would really appreciate uh, that facilitation. And because we love having one of you read it. And Brenda, thank you for stepping in for co-host. And you'll be back as SF next week. So we look forward to that. And Sheila, as always, thank you for all the um, coordination you do in the setup. And also... Um, I want to thank each and every one of you who make this possible and make it worthwhile to, um, to continue offering online services like this. So, shall we move on to a reminder that we have community circle after fellowship? Um, so please, uh, it's important that we hear from you. And seeing lots of messages in our chat, wishing Sheila a wonderful and well-deserved holiday, and I can't echo that enough. 
so glad you're taking time off. And next week, we on August 23rd, we have Being Present in Our Common Humanity. And this is with Reverend Melissa Horbach Lucet. And she is um, a minister that is certainly spoken at, at Kitchener, is highly recommended. And so we get to experience her in our community for the first time. Looking forward to it. Our prayer partner on duty this week is Mary Way. She is more than happy to share her beautiful prayers with you. Uh, if you would like a personal prayer, send an email to Sheila at the, well, actually, I'm not quite sure how we're going to do that. Uh, Sheila, maybe we can. Uh, yeah, I'll just jump in here. It's continue to send an email to the office and if it's, uh, if it's um, you'll get a bounce back. And if it's something that's a urgency that you want addressed, you can, e there's a forwarding email that's, pr that's in the vacation response. So I would continue to use the email address and, you, and okay. if it's urgent, you'll get a response. Super. Thank you. And there's other options for prayer, as you know, online, the you pray app and calling 1-800-NOW-PRAY. So in, um, so in closing, as we come to the end of our service, we take a moment to appreciate the challenges and the gifts received during this time of social distancing and the ability to put our, our own spiritual tools into practice. Remember, we need to release resistance and embrace acceptance. So go in peace. Blessed be, blessed be. And Spencer will uh, lead us in the prayer for protection. You're welcome to hold your hands out to receive this blessing. And then for the closing prayer, the closing song, just imagine that we were together and we are extending our hands out, holding on to each one in this community. And join us afterward for fellowship and the community circle. Have a blessed week.